Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Wally Mike, but together we are Modeling, Modeling for, for Advantage. Advantage. British 7th Armoured. So another one of these new D-Day boxes that they've re-released. These have been out before, I think in the past, because the range was less extensive in plastic, a lot of these boxes in the past are resin and metal. Now there's still bits of that in here, I think. We will see. But where there are new plastic kits, they're new plastic kits. We unboxed the Panzer Lair, the German yep. one. This one's quite a bit deeper and there's a lot it's of vehicles in here. Tell them what's in it, Mike. So we get eight Cromwell tanks, two Firefly tanks, two Crusader anti-aircraft self-propelled AAs, one motor platoon, four M5 half-tracks, four Sexton self-propelled guns, mm -hmm. one Sherman observation post tank, nine unit cards, one command cards, and in this special limited edition, the extras are one destroyed tank, Tiger tank objective, one destroyed Cromwell objective, 27th Armoured Division dice, 27th Armoured Division tokens and two objectives, and two 7th Armoured Division decal sheets. Very nice. So, I actually already made a 7th Armoured Division in Normandy, <laughs> British uh, Army. So, this is this is a force builder for me. Yeah. It's a collection builder. I think I've pretty much got all the units. Not the Sextants, though, because they're very new, I think. Yeah. Well, again, you know, I'm old now, so very new to me is... Is, is like last few months. But it's, that's a very satisfying sound. It is a lot. Of... Give us a moment to sort the piles out and we'll be right back. All right, so we have sorted out the piles of stuff. First of all, it's the Desert Rats, 7th Armoured. Notionally, British 7th Armoured Brigade still yep. use that now, but it was 7th Armoured Division from Normandy. These are some lovely, very bright, very red tanks. And same with the tokens, them being so red, they are quite striking, aren't they? They are. You're not going to miss them on the table. In, in a sea of brown and green, uh, these really stand out. But 7th Army is such an iconic formation for the British Army. We still have a formation that uses yep. that um, uh, epitaph today. So I'm really pleased to have these dice and tokens in my collection. I like the acrylic tokens anyway. Uh, yeah, I do. And um, those, those, those type of dice, they're really big and solid. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're not so big that they, they're going to take over half the yeah. table. They're like 12, 16 mil, something like that. And that's going to be a really distinctive. I'm going to go be going, oh, rats, when you roll your double Oh, seat. rats, indeed, because <laughs> it's a Jabara. Um, all the papery bits that we get, we get the unit cards. Now, unlike the Panzer Lair stuff, you also get this, which we like. Yep. QR code going to take you to the right bit of the website. Their website is enormous. If you Google... Panzer IV, you're going to get four pages of of, of just links. Articles, information. All kinds of stuff. Yeah, you're going to find the same time in Sherman or something. This is going to take you to the right part of the website, I assume. We haven't actually tried it, but yeah. it would be a bit mad if it didn't. Yeah. Um, as I have looked up these boxes on their website, there's a full breakdown of everything that's in and links to all their build instructions and everything. Because actually, there aren't build instructions here. I didn't notice that with the Panzer Lair. Yeah. Coming to think about it, there isn't a bit of paper. You normally get your leaf, you fold out leaflet. Yeah, you normally yeah. get your fold out leaflet. But I think this is a limited run thing yeah. for the 80th anniversary of D-Day. In our little baggie, we get our unit cards and our decal sheets. Is it the, the usual twin decal sheet or is it duplicated? It's the same sheet, two lots of, and uh, it's all 7th armoured. Right, so... Because the 7th Armoured, they know exactly which ones. The different squares, the squares are the battalion numbers. I, I was, for years I was calling them brigade numbers. They're the battalion, not, they're technically battalions, although they probably call them regiment numbers. The British Army has never been keen on putting two battalions from the same regiment in the same theatre. We like to spend them all over the world. Um, so with the tanks, 51 and 54 of their particular tank formations here. Again, there's more information about that on their particular yeah. website, but it will be that some of the tanks are in one and some of them are from another, depending on what tank model you build, because they refer to specific regiments. Um, and then these other multicolored ones are for other arms. So um, your infantry tanks, armored cars, and so forth, use the other ones. 
British people may tell you that British unit markings are really difficult. They are not difficult in 21st Army Group mm. because they standardized everything in 21st Army Group. So if you find British unit card marking, unit markings for Normandy, it will be correct. If you try and look it up for the desert, you'll discover that the numbers make no sense. They don't, they don't fit yeah. together. But every tank division's got 50, 51, 52, 53, every single one in, in the red boxes, yeah. for example, in 21st Army Group. But it's also, not, not on many of the sheets, it's got the bridge weight. Uh, yes. As, are there different numbers there? They're so small, yeah. it's hard yeah. to know. Um, so each unit does, each vehicle is going to have a different bridging weight. So yeah. you want to check that before you glue them on. But that's what yeah. the yellow circle with the black number is. It is the bridging yeah. weight. The, the idea behind that is, is as you drove up to the Bailey Bridge, or the, the engineers would look at the plate and go, no, nope, you're not crossing this. Yeah, yeah. How much does this tank weigh? Yeah, because you're not just supposed to know it. So because this is 7th Armoured Division, in Normandy, it got itself a bit of a reputation. These guys were veterans. They had been fighting the Nazis in the desert for a long time. And they are, what's the rule? I think it's careful, not stupid, or something like that. And what it means is, yeah, cautious, cautious, not stupid. They were very, quite, really quite slow in pushing on towards Kong um, after the initial invasion. And it was because they'd had a bloody nose many times in overextending against the Germans, particularly in tank-on-tank -tank actions. But in time after time in the desert, British tanks would encounter German tanks, chase them to closer range, and the German tanks would fall back onto a prepared gun line, which would then obliterate the British tanks. And be like, we're not going to keep doing that. And it meant that they were quite slow in that, and the rules reflect that. While that's good and bad, is it plays differently from other British forces because they've not got good morale. Um, so their uh, motivation, although they're confident, they're, let's have a look. Their remount is three, but their skill is only trained and they're otherwise reluctant. So they'll remount, but they won't infantry assault and things like that. They won't do yeah. those more risky things. Just notice one thing is on there, yeah. in your cards, the Challenger card. So they maybe provided it because you can take Firefly or Challenger yeah. as a gun tank, but you can't in Normandy, but the yeah. Desert Rats could later. Yeah. Um, so it's provided. You also get the unit card for using M5 half tracks with your motor platoon, which basically just says, I think you pay, you pay a point or two. You pay a point and you can put your guys in the half tracks, yeah. which we've got models for. Yeah, interesting to see a command card in a star box Yeah, as well. absolutely. Yeah, because you normally have to buy these separately as a deck. But I suppose because it's an integral part yeah. of the force, it's not actually on the motor platoons. Normally, if it, it, you'd have an armoured infantry card, yeah. and on the back it would give you different unit listings, whereas the way that it's been modelled with this force is it's done through a command card. I don't think these are new cards. They're just they're just yeah. removed from the set. They've created other copies of them. All right, what did you want to have a look at first? Then we'll talk you through all the so, plastic kit. Let's look at some half tracks, shall we? Look at some half tracks. Okay, okay. You're picking out a tricky one. So as we said, you're going to use the half track by use of this yeah. command card. It's going to cost you a point, and add one M5 half track transport for each Bren gun team or two Sten SMG teams in the unit, and add one for each gun team in the unit. So, yeah, for every two bases, you get one. For every gun, you get one. You're taking it with. We get how many of these? You get four of these. You get four of these. And they're going to transport your most. So now, you've built a whole bunch of I've these. I've got a whole bunch of these. Because you've got Americans. Yeah. The first sprue is nice and simple. Upper body, uh, the main body. Yeah. The, the crew compartment. Which just the running slots gear, straight in. Um, the, the winch on the front. Mm-hmm and the pulpit, which the British didn't use because they didn't normally... The second sprue is the fiddly one. You've got two different back doors. Yeah. Two different sets of uh, mud guards. Yeah. Then you've got the anti-ditching roller, which is different to the winch. Which is an alternative to yeah. the winch. It's because the different companies made them slightly different. Now, 
I don't actually care if I want to be brutally honest, but there is a right and a wrong way to build these if you if that really matters. Like the right back door goes because I think also it's about whether you have slightly rounded at the back corner yep. or whether it's angular. And I can't remember the details of which is which. That information is out there for people that want it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like you say. But because they're giving you the option for these two very different fenders, mud guards, they're glued on separately and individually. Yeah. And for a Flames of War kit, that's un uncommonly fiddly. Yeah. As I say, the first sprue goes together really nice. Then you get the fiddly bits. But it does give you some, some customization. Like you say, the... All of the American vehicles were built by different companies, and every mm. one of them had an idiosyncrasy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you get four machine guns. It's 230 two, and 250s, yeah. and that's one of each and a spare of it each. Yeah. Because yeah. what I normally do is, on, on my Americans, for yeah. visual reference, the 50 cal normally got the winch on, and right. the 30 cals have got the right. roller. So you can see them without bending down and looking at them. But right. the British ones, um, I understand, didn't come with the half track uh, with the with the machine guns. Well, I think uh, I don't think it's that they didn't come with them. It's that we took them off. Yeah. Because we didn't want them to be. They're not an assault. It's a truck with with tracks. It's like this is not an assault vehicle. This is not how our we want our infantry to fight. And um, to go along with the four of these, then you get a whole bunch of crew figures. Let's have a look. We're assuming that most of these are for... The, so these are Sciocast sculpts. They're quite nice looking... Nice looking guys. So you've got the drivers there. Yeah. Yeah, and then a few different poses. So there's a Bren Gunner. Another Bren Gunner. So you've got riflemen and Bren Gunners mm -hmm. that you can sit in the back. Yeah, and, now, and with, drivers. With these ones, unlike with the Germans, the Germans mm. seem to sit with their legs apart, and so do the Americans. Mm. These are moulded quite close together, mm. so I think you're going to get... You'll get a few of them, so you, yeah. you'll get more of that kind of road up, rank yeah. top look about them. Yeah, absolutely. All right. But they're nice, I, mean, yeah. I, I know it's sarcastic and it's not everyone's favourite medium, but they are clean sculpts right down there, the packs are nice, makes them look good. Yeah. Do they fit well on the seats with these backpacks? Because the, the packs are do deepen the figure. Uh, but looking at it, yeah, yeah, no, he's got the right kind of uh, cot in, on, on, into his backside that means he yeah. sits well on the seat and, 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 and his and feet the, touch the floor and they're not going to get they're going to sit knee to knee as well yeah some, some of the other models yeah. and I, I like it to have some with crews in mm. and then if you if you've got enough you can swap them out so right the crew's in at the moment yeah crew's out yeah but, and i just like the sound like the kind of feeling of of being lived in of having a yeah. few crew figures in especially in open top vehicles with big cavities you don't need to have them ranked up. No. You, but you, it looks a lot better for having a few in there. And nice that they've included them. Yeah. So, British Infantry. Yes, the British Motor Platoon. Not, not seen this, Brew, because I've not fought against the British or dealt with them, so... Okay, so the British Motor Platoon uh, consists of four Bren gun teams, a Piat team and a two-inch mortar team for five points. But for four points, you can take that down, drop one of them, so you get three bread gun teams, a Piat and a two-inch mortar. The, because of the way Flames of War models this stuff, so like the Bren, the Bren stroke rifle team is four guys, and then the commander's base is just three guys on a different size base. The British motor platoon, motor platoons end up looking tiny. Because, especially if you take that smaller one, because it's a HQ, two rifle bases and two weapons bases, it's got a really small footprint, but a respectable number of bases. Yes. Um, and those rifle bases doing three and two, they kick out a reasonable rate of fire. The mortar is interesting as well, because it doesn't fire as artillery. It fires as a direct fire weapon, the two inch mortar. It's got a 16 inch range, shoots once with an anti-tank power of two and a fire rate of four. 
I think the US light mortar fires as artillery. Yes. And artillery, it, it's good in some ways in that it's a lot better for digging out infantry and so forth with that sustained fire. You know, the repeat bombardment thing that yeah. makes them re-roll saves. But the art, the artillery mechanism is a much slower mechanism for delivering fire. And when you've got a single tube, any hits that you make, you have to roll again and probably miss. So I kind of wish that all the light mortars work like this, to be honest. Although it does mean that they won't be very good at digging people out when they're, you know, yeah. when they're in cover and stuff because of the way the hit number is modelled. So I can see why they kind of both models exist. But the sprue then, 24 guys on here, couple of wrens. There's two, two laying down and there's one guy. Walking. No, one of them laying down is a Piat. Oh, so it is, yeah. He's so. got he's got the uh, he's got the the, the Piat. So the um, the spring in a Piat, the projected yeah. infantry personnel infantry anti tank spigot mortar yeah. horizontal fire. And there you go, all the words. <laughs> it has a spring, but it isn't. It isn't the spring that provides the energy. This is one of the misnomers that people have. The spring is the firing pin. Yeah. Right. And that is actually, it's much more, it's a more, it's a, like you said, spigot mortar. Like a mortar, it's a bomb. Yes. Yeah. But it, it has some propellant in it. But what you need to think about it is like the term is a horizontal spigot mortar. It's a mortar fired horizontally. It's not a rocket. Yeah. But it isn't like, a, you know, a big coil spring doing, which is, I think, sometimes a kind of <laughs> perception that it has, because it does kind of arc as well when it fires, because it's relatively low yeah. velocity compared to a rocket weapon yeah. or whatever. But there's plenty of accounts. This weapon system was pretty good. Yeah. You know, in the hands of a trained operator who could predict the fall, who knew how it worked, it was good. As a sprue of infantry, like their other sprues, there's 24 guys on here. No two are the same. Uh, I quite like it. The You're going to find, if you're one of these people that hates to have a leftover figure on the sprue and you feel the need to find a use for him, you're not going to like this because you're going to have a lot of leftover figures because of the way the platoon is constructed. Um, yeah, it's, it's the two-inch mortar. Is it, you're not going to use all 24 guys before you've filled out the maximum platoon size. And so you're going to have two-inch mortars. You know, if you just build and paint every figure, uh, you're going to yeah. have too many two-inch mortars. Yeah, and I'm just looking, the, um, the, 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 the loader for the Piat is clearly carrying a, um, a, a box of tubes. So yeah. you can't even use him as a... A normal as a, infantryman. As, as, a, as a something else, yeah. Well, because every platoon comes with a two-inch mortar and has a maximum number of riflemen in it, you know, which you don't need all 24 figures. Yeah. But you do need both of these sprues to get the second mortar yeah. to make the second platoon, etc. I think it was something It was something to do with that. It's to, it is around the proportion. I remember when I built mine, I had loads of leftover figures. The one thing I noticed, as I said, not, not seen these before or played against them, mm is you've got those in the firing position or, or, or a steady advance. You haven't got the runners. Which there's, nobody, there's nobody running. They all look to be sort of like advancing steadily. Yes. Yes, um, they do. It's a bit, it, there's a bit more story. a bit more yeah. British. But, but you, you, haven't, you haven't got that like in his shorts running at the enemy guy. Yeah. But mm. you, you, you often have that. Is that you'll have a couple of guys firing and a couple mm. of guys running. And you're like, well, no, they'd either be doing one or mm. the other. Um, so... Advancing and firing is a, is a nice combination rather than, as you say, the, the bayonet charging. Mm. One's not going to be bayonet charging while the other two are now down firing. So, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. never likely And to. obviously we've got the, the, the officer in the tin hat with his Webley. Uh, of course. Yeah. And, yes. and with the lanyard. So. With the trusty service revolver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they're, they're, they're nice figures when yeah. they're painted up. I, I, I enjoyed putting mine together. Uh, so what I like to do with the, with the nature of the flames, you know, the way that the bases have got the poles in different positions, and like you were saying about the different poses, is I try as best as possible to carefully choose which figures go on which mm. base, 
to give it that. So this is a base that is firing. This is a base that's advancing. Yeah. This base is mostly advancing, but one guy is kneeling, a, you know, a back up. You do need to mix that with the... Well, you don't need to, but if you look on their website, you will find that this, their recommendation is across two bases of riflemen, you have this spread of... Yes. There's an, N, there's an NCO, there's a Bren gunner, there's two riflemen on this one, and then and uh, etc. And then you don't have to do that, but that's how you get closest to a historic squad. Yeah. And they've, they've put the time in to show you how that works. Anyway. So, standard bases. Mm. And we've got our tank commanders, which we'll probably come back to. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't believe it. If you've never seen a British Flames of War sprue <laughs> before, uh, then you haven't seen a tank commander. But I've, I've, I've seen every other nation's tank commanders. If, so. you, if you collect Flames of War, you probably get a mountain of tank commanders because they usually yeah. give you enough or nearly enough for, yeah. to have every vehicle being driven commander up. There's a couple of other Sirocast guys there. I think that they're just standing crew for the... They're for the Sexton. They're for the Sexton. So let's have a look at the Sexton. The Sexy Sexton. 25 pounder. Sexton is one of the newer British kits for Flames of War Late War. It came with this last release with the, with the Late War British. So, um, and I understand why, is they already had the Priest kit. The British used Priests as well as the Americans. But the, the Priest fires an American gun. The Sexton has got a 25 pounder in it. The downside with that is 25 pound is not quite as good a gun. So when you take in the Sexton, you're not saving many points and you are losing some firepower because I think it's a it's a smaller calibre weapon. Yeah. The, although the 25 pound is a fantastic gun, game systems inevitably have to model weapons in certain ways and it just doesn't, you know, some of those um, benefits of this superior weapon system may be a bit intangible on this scale. And what it is is a a smaller shell than that's coming out of the priest. But you get them two or four for six or 12 points. Um, they're quite uh, quite noticeable because they've got that really sheer front to yeah. them, haven't they? A high uh, which is quite unusual. It's a pretty low count kit, but it is a bit confusing if you've not seen it before because well, it's chopped off. I don't know which bits of this other sprue you're going to need. It's a while since I built one of these, but this is this is not a dual kit. This is a triple kit. This same kit running off this hull also makes the Ram Kangaroo and the Ram Tank. So the Kangaroo is that it is basically it's a Sherman tank without a turret used as an APC. And that's what this is. And the Ram tank was a Sherman tank built with a six pounder in the main gun. Rather First than of all, you've got to remember is that the it was the M4 that was built by Canada. Yeah. So they, they, they that's why they've got a slight there's same running gear, same engine, but they've got a different upper hulls. Because they're built in Canada. Yeah. Um with a yeah, with a six pounder gun and the Ram tank, and then the Kangaroo was a, a, an armoured personnel carrier. Yeah, or a Sherman tank without a turret, uh, uh, and a lot of the, and therefore a lot of the inner yeah. workings removed to carry a squad of guys. So this kit, if you didn't want the Sextons for whatever reason, and if you if you're a bit gamey, Jamie, you might not because the priest is definitely because the priest. Yeah, I think this is a slight downgrade, and you're saving maybe saving points in the wrong place, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, the option to make some ram tanks or uh, a kangaroo or pea or something is a good yeah. one. It is a straightforward kit. I, I, I don't remember having any problems with these when I built one quite recently. And it was a sexton that I built because we reviewed when this kit came yeah. out. Well, the, the one thing that strikes me is the, the, the thickness of this body shell. It is a really, really solid piece of plastic. It's oh, the upper, the upper structure. Yeah. When when you compare it to like the the, the one to two mil, yes. of, of other tanks, this 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 reflects the armor on it. It is a solid. I don't think it does because this thing doesn't have armor. No, <laughs> but I actually it's... think, Mike, I might be wrong. But if you look at how deep that is, out coming away from the center line, 
in injection molded plastic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gravity and pressure filled. And the deeper you go, the more problems you have with fidelity. Yeah. So I suspect it's got quite thick sides to, to make yeah. sure it has sides and they don't collapse in the molding process. Yeah. Because this is, this is quite high. And you see, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's more likely to have something yeah. like that. And just durability, because of the width of it, it might, if it was thinner sided, it, it might pinch. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit easier. But yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's but it is just metal you're right. plastic I've seen on it. It, it is quite thick. Not in a, not in an attractive way. I don't and think. I think the, the the Ram Stroke Kangaroo is interesting. If if you if you go and stand next to a Sherman tank, the upper deck is level with your head. Right. And you're jumping. If you're an infantryman in the Ram, you're jumping out of the turret ring that's been taken out. Yeah. And you're jumping six or seven foot to the ground because there's nothing. There's no sides. Or ladders or no, anything. No, no. So oh, there's not even a door, there's not a hatch being no. put in the back because that's where the engine yeah. is. And yeah. the gearbox is at the front. You're, yeah. you're climbing out the turret. Right you're now. coming out of the turret. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm see issues with that. Yeah. But you you are behind four inches of sloped armor. Yeah. You know, so there's pluses and minuses <laughs> there. Four inches of sloped armor, but a big a big jump when you get out. I go for the big jump when I get yeah. out. Yeah, and then so we've got a a loader and Obviously, a, a commander for each of these in the sire cast. So again, I, I like I like my figures in the, an open top vehicle. You've got to have your figures in there. Otherwise, it you know it, it's a, an empty tank rolling along the battlefield on its own. Mm, so, absolutely, absolutely. So that was yeah. the that was the uh, sexton, sexton stroke ram stroke kangaroo. Yep. Alrighty, we've got a couple of other tanks. We've got. What do you want next? Well, let's go with the old, the old favourite. Well, one of the many, one of Flims and was many Sherman kits. Yes. Yeah. This is one of their older Sherman kits. So this is their Sherman Five. The Sherman Five is I can't remember. Is it Chrysler built this one? This has yeah. got this has got a stretched hull compared to other Shermans. It's got a really dodgy engine in the back. It's engines. Engines. Two engines. I think it's, is it three bus engines? Uh, it's two, uh, two, two bus, I'm sure it's two bus engines. But okay. it's multiple engines. Multiple engines at the back around a single crankshaft, which means it can be quite difficult to repair yeah. and so forth and do maintenance. But this was the Normandy British Sherman, yeah. the Sherman 5. I think a few of them turn up in the desert, but fundamentally this is the one in there. This is a very flexible kit though. So, um, and it needs to be because as well as building the Sherman 5, the Sherman 5s are the variant that makes the Firefly. So you can see this is why you've got two upper turret shapes here. Yep. This one with the deeper turret bustle, and you're still going to stick another box on the back of that. That's for the Firefly. That's why you've got two glasses plates as yep. well. These kind of front armor plates. The one, one of them will mount some machine guns. The other one has the machine gun positions yep. blanked off because that was used for something else. Um, do you actually put the machine gun on? Yeah, I saw it just a second. You do, I think it's a funny little piece, the machine gun, you know, because it, cause it slopes. Oh, there it is, yeah, you've got the long line of, you've got the 50 cows, then you've got the 17 got the, pounder, and then you've got the 75 mil, and right at the very top. And then you've got the, yeah. So if this tank might give you some trouble, you'll be getting this out. And unfortunately, like a lot of the Flames of War stuff, I mean, you can see the light passing through, how thin yeah. that some of this plastic is. It's perfectly strong, by the way, um, but they don't make it any thicker than it needs to be in most cases. You want a sharp knife to get this out. Um, the front is not a terrible problem, and it's not under a lot of tension, like a lot of these pieces mm. often are. But what you really need is a really clean cut on the back of it. Because yeah. the back of it is going to have to glue to one of these faces on the glasses plate. And if it's not flat, then it's not going to rest mm. flat. Because it's got a kind of protruding portion of a ball mount and it's flat at the back. Yeah. So if you want it to point straight ahead, you need a really clean cut when getting that off. The way, the way to do it is you've got, you've got to basically pinch the barrel. And then your, the tops of your fingers are level with the back plate so you can cut it. And it doesn't ping off or anything like that, and then you can turn it around and cut the and cut the, the other the end. barrel end. But yeah, it is fragile. 
or you're not not pinch it hard because you snap yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. We're probably making it sound worse than it is. It's just like the only bit on this kit that I remember needing to be a yes. careful with. But conversely, I don't remember breaking any of them. No. Um, I'm just I'm just trying to kind of offer you the learning experience. Um, like a lot of their stuff, the tracks and the running gear are in a single piece, which means you're not going to put it on. Uh, you're not going to mess the alignment of it. It's keyed by pins, and there's more on one side than the other, which means you can't put them on the wrong way around. Love it. Uh, but you do want to get on their website and follow that QR code, whatever, to make sure that you're building the right one. Because yeah. um, the Firefly's got a different glasses plate, different upper turret, and the turret bustle is constructed differently. It's not just yeah. either of these stick the biggest gun in, that's the Firefly. There are subtle differences. Even down to this, is a, there's a gun lock piece which goes on, I think, the front, but it might be on the back, I don't remember. Yeah. But it does go somewhere specific. The yeah. gun lock, the travel lock for the gun. It comes, it's got the, the uh, single uh, British gearbox. Um, it with front. a three part transmission yeah, cover. Because this is the, the, the Sherman 5 and the Firefly, you're only going to get the one. So no the one type, yeah. yeah. Whereas when you get the other Sherman types, generally the smooth ones, the cast ones are American, yeah. whereas these ones are, are for British service. Yeah as a rule of thumb uh, but you see both in both yeah a few extra Different bits of uh, barrel uh, bit of running gear mm -hmm. some spare tracks and that so yeah so if, if you've only ever built the kind of m4 a1 kit that came with the hit the beach or whatever, that this is a more involved kit than yeah. that but it has more flexibility especially in relation to building a firefly now is firefly a decent tank well i mean i'm i'm preaching to the choir here i'm sure but where is, you know, you mentioned earlier that we've got Challenger in it as a card. Because you don't have a Firefly card. Uh, well, then you and Sticky, ah, there you, there you go. do have Firefly. Ah. But if I look at the Cromwell card, you can, the Cromwell card allows you to take Cromwell or Firefly. That yeah. was right. All right. So the Firefly, you're not going to take this as a unit as it, on its own. This is a, a, a unit that is embedded in the Cromwell yeah. squadrons. Um, and generally speaking, at this point in the war, British tank platoons are four, three Shermans, three Sherman Fives, or three Cromwells, and one Firefly is what they start with at the beginning of a campaign. Later, more Fireflies become available, but you generally only one in four. But why Firefly is so good is she's got that anti-tank power of 14. Mm. And in, 19, in summer 1944, that's really good. Because if we look at the front armour of Cromwell, it's six. Firefly, six. Panzer IV, six. Yeah. Panther is about ten, maybe. You know, so you need this big gun to go through. Because the Cromwell with the 75 mil has got an anti-tank power of ten. And that the difference between ten and fourteen when firing armours of ten is yeah. huge. Of eight, nine, ten. Cromwell's okay against other medium tanks. Firefly trash medium tanks, and he's okay against heavy tanks. Yeah. Yeah. Should so, we should we talk about Cromwell? Yeah. As you because this is the main tank in this box. Yeah. How many have we got? We got eight. Yep. Eight Cromwells. So you're going to make a command team of two, mm -hmm. and then obviously. Three, three, uh, two units of three with a Firefly in each. Yeah, well, was there was a command card, Cromwell Armoured Troop. That, that, yes. So, again, if you're new to Flames of War, things you want to know about the Cromwells, you want to check this HQ unit card out before you start building the turrets. Because there are three versions of Cromwell, but I think you only build two here. Yeah. There's 75 mil arm Cromwell and close support arm Cromwell, which yeah. has got a mortar in it. But there is an absolute limit. You will never have more or less, possibly less. But you'll never have more than two close support Cromwells in a formation because they only go in the HQ. Yeah. So you need to be mindful that you don't build too many in that way. Um, and that is the... Of the two guns here, it is the much shorter one. Is the yeah. is the close part mortar, All right? Um, so this is, and I think pretty standard for a modern Flames of War kit. You can see 
The main body is assembled in a couple of pieces, two more for the tracks, three or four more for the turret, and then you've got a plate to stick on the front and back. Goes together really well. Gun fits in nicely. Um, storage is so-so. The machine gun is unusual in the way that it fits into the turret. Have you built one of these now? I've not built any British. I'm just looking at it. You've got two different driver mantlets or glasses plates. Yeah, which are different for the yeah. for the mortar versus the versus the main gun. Right, so I just I, I probably can't see it here, right? So this is the, the kind of front face of the turret. Yeah. And you see that's the other way around. Yeah. Now, if you look at that. Now when you when you look into this, you'll see that there is a recess with two misaligned holes. Yeah. One of those is for the gun and the other is for the machine gun. And it's important to, I cannot remember whether it's machine gun on the left or machine gun on the right. Yeah. But like a lot of these tanks, the gun isn't necessarily exactly in the middle. I think with the 25, with this one, with the uh, 75 mil, I think it's you'll see that the way that the, the machine gun fits it's got a keying point and so is the back of the gun and they're molded together so you're, you're not gluing two separate pieces in you're only in one piece but it, it's keyed and they're slightly in, offset in, they're slightly offset yeah and you want to get it the right way around and i don't actually remember from the mm. top of my head whether it was, and it's one of them three dimensional things where looking at a photograph isn't helping you sometimes. I'm just gonna look now at the Cromwell and see. And it's, oh, not, it's not facing it's the not, right way for yeah. us to tell you. Um, there is, but there is a right and a wrong way to do that. Um, and I remember being a bit uncertain, but I think one of the holes is near in the middle. You'll find out when you have a go. Uh, but, but again, that's just the kind of what what did I learn by building this kit that yeah. I could share with you? It's just something to be mindful of. Now, Cromwell in British service. Late war. Very late war. It's almost exclusively reconnaissance tanks. So almost all the Cromwells you're going to see in Normandy, certainly, are in the recon battalions of armoured divisions. The one force in Normandy that has Cromwells as their mainline tank is Seventh Armoured. So that's how those kind of decals, dice, yeah. and the choice of weapons and, and tanks in the box all fit together. And the reason I'm, I'm sort of pointing that out to you is if we go back to these, there's very few Cromwells that can have these red squares on them. And they're all in 7th Armoured. <laughs> the rest have not red squares because they're part of the recon troop. Yeah. Whether it's green over blue or... I don't remember which one it is. So, um... They're interesting. And if you like to really sort of get into the nitty-gritty of the force you're building, Cromwells are an interesting one because you can go back and look at the handful of, of units that were there and you can find out exactly which guards battalion had the Cromwells in Normandy. Because one of the things we didn't know, we looked into exactly that. We put guards armoured on ours and then discovered they didn't have Cromwells. The only thing part of guards armoured that had Cromwells is a recon battalion and they're Welsh. <laughs> and that's fine, but that was just like, you know, just like, I learned something there. So that was a Cromwell. Well, I don't know whether I've finished talking about it. There's so much to say about Cromwell, yeah. Mike. Oh, Cromwell. Is it not the, the first decent British tank of the war? The only? The only this <laughs> I mean Churchill. War. Churchill. Churchill's tanks, alright? Yeah. 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 Matilda two is alright. Ish. Not having played them in any of I have not played I say I, I normally always play the Americans and mm. so I've not played the British, so not so sure on where where they sit and how I play them. But yeah. So stat wise she's very similar to other vehicles of the year. She's she's a medium you know, yeah. You're trying to put a cigarette paper between this and a Panzer IV and a Sherman, but what it does get is a 12-inch tactical move, so if you like to be aggressive. But one of the things that's interesting about this list is you're going to get more because of that careful, not stupid, mm. because of that relatively low morale. Um, 
and it is tough to play with these relatively low morale units because they're sm you know because they're small units. Yes. And the way Flames of War morale works is you're only testing on the last vehicle. Well, you get to the last vehicle quicker, and then they're garbage in the morale test. So their remount is okay. But once they get into bad spirits or in poor standing or whatever mm. the language is, it's difficult to get out of it. You can end up, you know, they can, they can definitely break. So, but because of that, it makes them a little bit cheaper. They are tough to play, though, having played, mm. with, you know, with and against them. So there's a few points you're saving for this week of morale. Does sting at the same yeah. time. But I kind of liked it because it played differently to all my other armies. And that was an interesting thing to do. We got one more vehicle. One more vehicle? Which is both very old and quite new. Yeah. Which is the Crusader AAA. I'm saying but old and new. Now, I know the Crusader itself is quite old. So we've got 2017 for the main tank and 2020... For the, the widgey sprue. For the upgrade sprue. So from time to time, they replace things that they've had in resin and metal. Maybe they're things that sell well, so they know there's a real demand for it with plastic equivalents. So this Crusader was part of the original Flames of War version for release, whether it was day one, but it was part of that 2017 version for or new plastic mid-war kits. It was great. Whereas when we moved to down to, down to D-Day a couple of years ago, so 2020, they brought out this upgrade sprue. Uh, and it, it's really nice. I built a couple of these. It is quite a complicated turret to assemble relative to things that you might be used to. And actually the Crusader, it's got several options on here. The parts count seems like still you're going to interact with like less than 20 of them. But you add that to the complicated sorry, it is one of the more involved kits. None of it is particularly difficult. I'm just trying to remember. You do need to know which versions you're building of Crusader because it had a lot of versions. Now, if you're just using it in Normandy, this thing, the Crusader tank, hasn't been used as a cruiser tank for two years. It's used as a self-propelled AA tank because um, it's got the speed it can keep up because it was built as a cruiser tank. I mean, the Cromwell is basically a better cruiser tank. So um, all of these Crusader holes that they had kicking around, they just built a, an anti-aircraft turret for, which is fine. Turns out they didn't need them, though. No. Germany didn't have an air force left <laughs> by the time we know all these and a lot of them didn't actually get shipped over or got used for other purposes if you decide to build the this as a crusader because you already got the AAs or you don't want it in your list or whatever you will need to get on their website because the, the different guns the different mantlets they do mean you need to assemble it differently you've even got one of these uh, funny turrets at the front where like early on in early iterations of Crusader, they have a gun turret, an extra machine gunner in the in almost in the driver's position, in his own little turret. In the Western Desert, that man's head melted. They, 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 they got cooked. so they could they blanked it off. They're like literally yeah. baking these guys inside. Um, so they got rid of them. But for this set, you've been making this. And just be a little bit careful when you're assembling the gun and so forth. Because it is, there are small pieces. Because this is a fifteen mil um, flat, you know, twin flak, and you're gonna get one of the crew figures from the Sciocast, I think, is gonna go in here. But interesting, it does come with a separate turret peg, so you can build a Crusader turret and a yeah, AA yeah. turret. Yeah, Although you paint it radically differently, yeah. but yeah, you yeah. would. Um, it also, which again they do from time to time, is another little bit of storage on there. There's a little box. Yeah which you can mix and match on some of your other tanks, you know, where you put a bucket on it or whatever. Uh, last of all, we've got a couple of bits of big lumps of resin in here as objective markers. These two objectives, they're the same two that we got that came with the Panzer Lair one. So they're sculpts of, I've got over here a Tiger, which is very much an iconic piece of Normandy. 
it's in a strange position because it's like it's backed up into a wall and the building's collapsed on it because the wall's still standing. <laughs> yeah. But there's a load of rubble on top of the tiger. So precisely how that's worked. But, um, and you do get a metal barrel for the tiger for that one. And yours is a Cromwell. Uh, it's got bent fenders at the front. So. So it's been knocked out. Yeah, and this is the close support one. Now, now we've discussed that. Mm. Um, lots of shell casings, some camouflage netting, uh, right. textured base. So, so these are mounted on there, uh, fifty by eighty or whatever they're yeah. like. Their artillery bases. This is the same size as their objective markers. So the idea with these is they're just a decorative way of putting your objectives on, which I think is think is quite interesting. Overall, there's, I mean, there was a lot of plastic here. I don't know how many vehicles was it in the end? I think it's 17. Something like 17 vehicles. So quick count, yeah, 20 vehicles here. Hopefully we've got it right. Plus the infantry, plus the resident objective markers, plus the beautiful red dice and tokens, decal sheets, really good value. I mean, it, I think it retails for £116, which is a lot. You know, I'm not hiding that. And if you already have... 10 Cromwells, maybe not, but it isn't just a big box of Cromwells, it's got the auxiliary bits. Now, I don't have these guys, you know, there's 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 a lot about this to like. The Sherman 5s, I like that in most of the British sets that they've done over the years, you get a couple of Sherman 5s, so I've never actually bought a specifically Sherman 5 set, but eventually I'll be able to have a Sherman platoon instead, which is good. Same with giving me the option for the, for the sextons. That's quite a new kit. Infantry, nice. Tokens, the fact that it plays different. Really happy with this set. And, and the Challenger card, so you can... So I could go away and buy a, a box of Challengers yeah. and, and put them in. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in doing that, definitely later in the war, Firefly starts to get replaced by Challenger. I don't think it's around for Normandy, though. No. And it... You don't want Challenger, it's a very ugly looking tank. You know, <laughs> Firefly looks nice. Yeah. Alright guys, I hope that was useful for you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description, but a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you. Thank you.